Hey, hey, kids, we're a couple of annoying grunt boys, and this is the 138th Simpsons Podcast. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome when we live in our dreams. That's right. We're the podcast that explores the show The Simpsons from seasons 11 and beyond. Why 11 and beyond yet? Ask? Well, you know why. You know it in your hearts. Stop lying to yourself. There are already another bunch of podcasts that explore the golden age of The Simpsons, seasons 1 through 10, and we want to explore later, from the 11 and beyond, to see if there's things that we love, we hate, but we can discuss. I am half an annoyed grunt boy Steve, and I can't do this on my own. So with me, as always, is your other half annoyed grunt boy. <coughs> open the door here. Turn and creak. Sorry, am I late? You're right on time, actually. You can really, you're inside now, you can really, you don't need to keep on ringing the doorbell. But I like to. It's fine. I know. Surely like you've been, <laughs> been places like before that have a doorbell. <laughs> I feel like I've, I've done this before. All right. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, hey. Happy Thanksgiving, Steve. And uh, happy Thanksgiving to you, Craig. Thanks for inviting me over to your Thanksgiving feast. I, there's a lot of people here, Steve. I, there shouldn't really be that many people here. This is COVID You time. know, I just figured after the year that everyone's had, <laughs> you know, we just deserve to get together and, you know, celebrate <laughs> together. Why are we shoulder to shoulder with everyone? There's 300 people in your 10 by 10 living room. <laughs> well, you know, we haven't seen each other in so long. <laughs> Billy Joe and Jackie Sue <laughs> and Johnny Frank. And yeah, you know. All right. Well, I'm excited for your turkey. Yeah. Uh, do you want some uh, chewing tobacco? I have a communal uh, <laughs> spittoon going around. Thanks. Yum, yeah. yum. <laughs> Guys, we're not actually in the same room. We're not idiots. Uh, we're not COVID idiots. Oh, I like that. Yeah. It's a thing going around the internet, Steve. It's not something I created. Uh, yeah. You just... created COVID? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, hmm, this bat looks tasty. <laughs> yum, yum. I just said yum, yum twice now. <laughs> What is wrong with me? <laughs> <sighs> How are we doing? It's great. It's Thanksgiving. No one cares. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully you're listening to this uh, by your lonesome because you can't be with your family. And we appreciate right. your sacrifice. Yeah. It sucks. But, you know, skip this Thanksgiving. And then you can have many more to come. You know, I know like we've lost almost, you know, 300,000 people to this horrible pandemic. I like to reflect on the year 2020 as the year of like, who cares? <laughs> You know, it's that uh, eat whatever you want, mm-hmm. watch whatever you want, just be safe and uh, protect yourself and protect others. That's right. It's the, um, how would I describe 2020? It's, the, uh, it's that five minutes that you get between when your alarm goes off and you hit the snooze. Ooh. Like you really can't sleep, but you can, can just lay there and be like, okay, I don't really need to be up right now. I got five minutes of breathing room of just uh, just doing nothing. That's a really nice way to put it. And I think it's important to think about, you know, take some time to enjoy the time that you couldn't enjoy before. Just, you know, it's bonus time. It's a bonus year. Yeah. You know, those little things you could put off. You can keep putting them off. Who cares? You're not going anywhere. You're not doing anything. Hmm. You know, it's uh, if you're pregnant, don't have the baby now. Just have it whenever you want to. But after a pandemic, you know. Exactly. Is that how pregnancy works? You could be just cross your legs and hold it in. <laughs> Come January 21st, though, get back to work. That's all we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> As in, we'll have a, a lockdown for three weeks where drones will deliver us food. And if you go outside, uh, you'll be shot to death. I think that's, that's what's going to happen, right? I think so, yeah. In Biden's America, not a political podcast. Not a political podcast. <laughs> like how we like said, we'll, we'll stop talking politics uh, <laughs> when Biden's elected. But now we were anti-Trump on this podcast. Now we're going to be anti-Biden. Just yeah, we just don't like whoever's in that White House. Yeah. The only person that in a White House should be Homer. Mayor Quimby. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Who are you going to say? Homer Simpson. Who's that? Uh, he's the star of The Simpsons. Should we watch The Simpsons? Yes, maybe we should. Oh, cool. Which one? Uh, why not a uh, brick like me? That sounds dirty, Steve. I don't want a brick like you. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, today we're talking about brick like me. It's uh, from May the 4th, Star Wars Day. Yay. May the 4th, 
2014. So long ago. I know. What, Craig, was the movie that was in the box office that was number one? Well, since we're talking a Lego movie, it was not a Lego movie. Oh. It was the uh, Amazing Speederman 2. Ooh. The story of a young Jewish fellow named Speederman. <laughs> right? Yes. Oh, it's been a Spider Man. Okay, Spider Man 2. Steve, you're a huge spider. You're a webhead, as like the kids like to call it. Uh, sure am. So you must love the, uh, the Amazing Spider Man movies. Um, Maybe I do, maybe I don't, and maybe I haven't seen them. <laughs> You've never seen the uh, Andrew Garfield, Lasagna Yum Yum movies? No, I. I, I like Mondays. Did I just say yum yum for the third time? You sure did. <laughs> Why do I keep saying yum yum? Yum yum. <sighs> um, yeah, I uh, I love the Tobey Maguire uh, Spider-Man, even three. Um, I have not yet seen The Amazing Spider-Man. I would like to eventually. And you haven't seen the Tobey Hoop, Toby Hooper, what? <laughs> You've seen the Tobey Maguire. Have you seen right. the uh, Tom, Thomas and Holland ones? I have not. I feel like, I mean, you love them because I think Tom Holland is the best live action portrayal of uh, Peter Parker we've had so far. Okay. But I feel like there's so much baggage. That's what I'm, that's me, my biggest fear is like, I don't want to like, have to dive so deep into other stories. But does like Thor the Dark World really mm-hmm. connect to the Spider-Man Homecoming? No, not at all. Okay. I think it's more like... Uh, there's probably like if you go on like Google and you type in like truncated Marvel movie viewing orders, like, well, you don't really need to watch this movie for this to happen. Because really the only the only character that really I think just Iron Man, he's the only character that shows up in the first Spider Man movie. So Okay. Well, you know, I've got Iron some uh, more free time these days, so maybe I'll check them out. You got the Disney Plus has all the uh the fun Marvels. Um it doesn't have the Spider Man movie, so <laughs> Yeah. Because of Sony deals, things right. Crap. Well, I just have to get Sony Plus. <laughs> I think it's just called Crackle. Oh, <laughs> no Crackle still around? Yeah, um, they still have like episodes of King of Queens and like it's like three episodes. <laughs> the pilot to Hill Street Blues. <laughs> uh, well, Steve, uh, what were we uh, bopping to? Oh boy, yeah. Craig, it was a big song of the. I would say the year, definitely the summer. It's uh, by uh, one Pharrell Williams, and it's entitled Happy. song so much <laughs> yeah was this were you still uh kj during these times when the song was around uh, it came out what 2014 right yeah, yeah. of course okay because that seems like a would be unbearable and everyone would do it um i don't know if anyone did okay that's good because yeah. uh, every time you hear the song now i'm sad <laughs> yeah i'm just a little bit angry all right oh boy another guest no, it's just me. I walked outside. Just this is this is what makes me happy, Steve. <laughs> Does it make you go yum yum? <laughs> mm, yum yum. <laughs> <sighs> well, Steve, uh, what's this episode again? Uh, so it's called Brick Like Me, and uh, Homer must figure out what to do when he wakes up to a world where everything and everyone is made out of Lego bricks. That sounds awesome. Everything is awesome. All right, Steve, let's take an awesome break. Come back and discuss said episode. Sounds good. We'll be right back. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like a room without. And we're back. Today we're talking about Brick Like Me, the 20th episode of the 25th season. It originally aired on May the 4th, be with you, 2014. It is episode 550 in the show's run. Your nerd code is RABF21. It was written by Brian Kelly, directed by Matthew Nastuck, and your showrunners are Al Jean and Matt Selman. So Brian Kelly, we have reviewed 
an episode that he wrote. He did uh, the Simpsons. There seems to be a a, a theme with him. Huh. Yeah, he likes um, the Simpsons, but doesn't want them in their world. <laughs> right. I think that's the only one we've done of his. He has a few here. A um, couple old Treehouse of Horror stuff, mm-hmm. but we haven't got to those episodes yet. Yeah. Uh, also wrote on uh, Futurama. Wrote an episode of that. That's fun. Also on uh, News Radio. Don't forget Clerks. Yes. Uh, show. Saturday Night Live. And um, Joey, the uh, classic spinoff of uh, what's that show? Uh, uh, Pals. Pals. No. Uh, God, um, they like to hang around a coffee shop. These friends of mine. That's right. These friends of mine. Oh, wait, that's Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and right. Jeremy Piven. Yeah. How come he's not canceled yet? It's way overdue. <laughs> Just right. for uh, PCU. <laughs> yeah. He is a piece of you. <laughs> uh, so, Craig, this uh, this title, Brick Like Me, mm. is a parody of the book Black Like Me, which was uh, written by John Howard Griffin in 1961. Are you familiar with the book? Well, in late 1959, John Howard Griffin went to a friend's house in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, once there, under the care of a dermatologist, Griffin underwent a, a regimen of uh, large oral doses of anti vitiligo drug methosolone. Mm-hmm. And he uh, spent up uh, 15 hours daily under an ultraviolet lamp when uh, he could pass as an African-American. And Griffin began a six-week journey in the South. No, I'm not familiar with this book, Steve. Are you? I am. I read it. And it's it's not as horrible as it sounds. Basically, he wanted to know what it was like to be black. Yeah. So he kind of made himself black, but did it with a great deal of respect. There's and a... I was just going to say, in my high school paper, I pitched a concept that never took to it but i wanted to do other like me things so like the other like different people in school like goth like me or jock like me i thought that would have been interesting but it didn't so you would have for jock like me you would have started exercising maybe i vetoed it myself now that you mention it Nerd like me i will study harder <laughs> lazy piece of shit like me there you Done. go <laughs> There was a famous uh, Superman comic book, too, where uh, Lois Lane gets her skin colored to be black to understand what it's like to be an African-American woman. Hmm. It's a very controversial comic book. I would um, imagine, but... Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think bad. it just has a lot to do with tone and like... Or not tone, but like... <laughs> how Choice how words, Steve. <laughs> how it's like presented it, as long as it's respectful, is what right. I'm trying to say. Yeah. Anyway, the cartoon that we talk about. Brian Kelly won a Writer's Guild of America Award for this uh, show for Outstanding Writing and Animation at the 67th Writer Guild of America Awards. Hey, good for him. Yeah. He was also nominated for uh, The Surfsons and Live in La Pura Vida and Treehouse of Horror uh, 23. Just nominated. This is the only one he won, though. Wow, good for him. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. This episode is also a uh, celebration of the new Simpsons line that came out around this time as well. Uh, I think the... one of us might have the house, Steve. <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, also the Quickie Mart. Oh, you got the Quickie Mart. Yeah, I've... well, I, I never bought them, but... Uh, They're in your house. <laughs> they are in my house, yes. I didn't um, steal them. <laughs> you'll steal them, yeah. Uh, have they made... Have they just done the Quickie Mart and uh, Simpsons house? To the best of my knowledge, but there's such a wellspring of things that they could do. Oh, I don't know why they haven't done more. I would go for, what would your Simpsons Lego? I feel like we should um, talk about this at the end of the episode, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, Lego Moe's would be fun. Yes. You're right. It's just the, I, I'm on Amazon here and it's still just the uh, Quickie Marts and the Simpsons house, which are going for a ridiculous amount of prices. I know they originally were like $300 when they're new. Mm-hmm. Now you're looking like 510 bucks for the house and 550 Ooh. for the Quickie Mart. You can still get some of the minifigs, though. I have a lot of the minifigs. I don't have them all, but the blind mm-hmm. bags, I got quite a few of them. Oh, yeah, those are fun to get. Yeah. Yeah, no, I would go. Yeah, I think Moe's, that's that's definitely the way to go. I mean, Springfield Elementary, that Bart builds a billion of those, but that seems like it'd be an expensive set. Yeah, you could also do the power plank, but uh, yeah, that'd be another. That'd be a big I one. I guess Quickie Mart. I mean, a Krusty Burger and a, and a Moe's, I think that's that'd be the way to go. Mm-hmm. And there's plenty of landmarks like the church, the Bolorama, the tire fire. <laughs> <laughs> I still, one of these days I'll get to us. You can go on AliExpress, which is, if you guys don't know what AliExpress is, it's a, it's a website that sells just kind of like knockoff, a lot of knockoff stuff you can get there from China. Mm-hmm. So you can get knockoff Legos for about half the price 
of Ooh. retail. They don't say Lego. They'll be like, Lego. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think you could actually get the Simpsons house for like maybe 60 bucks. Wow. But it's not an authentic. It's not actually Lego. It just comes with like a He-Man action figure and <laughs> yeah. a couple of Cheetos. I think the Burks are all like white and you have to paint them yourself. <laughs> or they're made from lead paint, so don't put them in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Um, so our episode begins with neither chalkboard nor couch gag, but with a black screen and the sound of Homer snoring. Marge pushes Homer awake, telling him he's, that he's having a nightmare. And for some reason, Homer says, it's not selling out, it's co-branding. Hey, this is the only episode of season 25, and one of the very few episodes overall that does not have a uh, chalkboard gag or couch gag in the opening sequence. Hmm, interesting. I think we've reviewed one other one that I'm not remembering off the top of my head. Well, how dare you? I'm sorry. Homer then slowly opens his eyes to discover his wife, Marge, in Lego form? <laughs> In fact, everything's in Lego form. The characters are all minifigs, and the familiar pink hued bedroom is all made of brick building blocks. Homer states that the best part of his day is waking up to Marge's smiling face, and just like the best day of his life was when he, Marge gave him her hand in marriage. He then takes Marge by the hands, and one of them pops off of her body. I remember when the promos for this episode came out, and then also coinciding with the Lego minifigs in the sets. Mm-hmm. Were you a little disappointed that the minifigs don't match up with the cartoon? Because, <laughs> like, on the minifigs, like, it actually has, like, their overbite, and it's 3D. Their faces are 3D. But in the cartoon, their faces are just printed on. Yeah. Like an actual minifig, or, like, the actual Lego versions. I think that's what disappointed me, is that, like, the Legos that are on screen in this episode are what I wanted them to be. Right. And, yeah, the fact that they're three-dimensional in real life, it's weird. I mean, I'm fine with a three-dimensional one, but, you know. Yeah. I guess you're right. I, I would have liked, yeah, it's, it's the same thing. I would have wanted just the faces on the, like, they would, their heads would actually fit actual other Lego sets. Like, they would go together. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well. I don't know. Well, uh, Marge uh, chuckles from her popped off uh, hand and uh, requests another, her hand back. But uh, before he can return the limb, we get uh, Lego Santa's little helper jumps on the bed and he's uh, sending bricks everywhere and, and takes the hand. And Homer demands the family pet drop his wife's hand and she needs it to reciprocate uh, high fives, which, uh, how do they do that? Because they can't. Uh... <laughs> I the see. Dog, yeah, the dog. Uh, yeah, I see. <laughs> Uh, the dog uh, bounces across the bedroom, and Homer closes uh, behind, and a barrage of bricks uh, fall behind them. Oh, boy. I remember when I was a kid, I thought they weren't hands. I always thought they were just holding mugs the whole time. <laughs> I like that a lot. But there's no bottom, so, like, I don't understand. Like, what? Uh, huh. I just thought they really like giving hand jobs. I mean, they're perfect for it. They got the kung fu grip. That's like, exactly. Um, luckily, Marge has a closet full of body parts. Two bodies featuring her trademark dress and another uh, more formal high neck dress. A uh, backup beehive with uh, hair rollers and drawers full of body parts, uh, such as uh, more hair, hands, hats, and purses. Uh, Marge opens the hands drawer and grabs the one she last used on New Year's Eve, which is uh, grasping a champagne flute. Because her hands are hands and not mugs. Exactly. <laughs> I think those uh, the formal wear was one of the uh, mini figs you can get in the blind bags, right? I think so. Yeah. We then cut to an exterior shot of the 742 Evergreen Terrace, complete in brick form, which you can purchase at Amazon.com right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the kitchen, uh, Marge is getting uh, breakfast started. Drop in a yellow piece onto a gray piece to represent an egg and a frying pan. You know, one of those little dots, just the mm -hmm. dot. I think I think they're called studs from oh, my yeah. research. Yeah. So a yellow stud. Steve, you should have in the notes put the uh, item number too. Don't they all each have like little oh, numbers? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, she puts it on the frying pan and uh, we pan out and we see the rest of the Lego family enjoying the brick version of their morning meal. That's right. Bart stops eating to comment that something seems weird about the day. Uh, Marge points out that Homer is wearing a tie and the family all agree that this is the one and only odd occurrence of the Simpsons on this day. And I have that minifig with him in the tie. I like it. It's nice. Hey, so you have the house. Do they have the corn cob uh, curtains in the kitchen? Yes, they do. Nice. Does it look just like that? Just like little slabs? Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, the so, house is yeah. impressive because the car comes with it too. Nice. And that could almost be its own set in and of itself. Right. They could upscale it. Mm -hmm. Can you fit all the family in the car though? I'm trying to remember. I think you can. It's not in plain view of me, but I think so. Yeah. Well, uh, Marge then scolds uh, Maggie. 
she's playing with her food and we see a larger duplo version of maggie in a toy car <laughs> and a toddler then reconstructs the car into a baby bottle and consumes its content i love the I fact love that, that. <laughs> maggie's the duplo <laughs> Now, they never uh, made Duplo versions of The Simpsons, as far no, as No, I mean. maybe when they come out with, like, Simpsons Babies. Like Bubba Babies? But Simpsons, yeah, like a new yeah. series. On Disney Plus, exclusively. Exactly. And it'll be CGI, too. Oh, yeah. And it'll huh. look weird and feel kind of odd. None of the, you know, voices will be the same, like the actors. Yeah. It'll be like Homer, for some reason. He'll we'll, just have a voice that doesn't sound like Homer. Hi, I'm Homer. Hey, Marge. Did I bark? That sounds like a, a South Park character you just did. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, Homer then hits the uh, the road of Lego Springfield, and we see some minifigures of various townspeople and businesses such as... Lard Fig Donuts. The 99 Stud Store. Brick Mart. H&R Brick. Which seems kind of like a lazy joke, because H&R Block would have been <laughs> just as funny. Uh, the first brick of Springfield. Brick Block and Beyond. And even a store for adult blocks. While driving, Homer calls a toy store, and he's supposed to get his daughter a birthday present, specifically Perky Patty's Princess Shop. I'm popping my peas there, Steve. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Homer's too busy looking at his phone. He doesn't see that uh, Krusty is crossing the street. Don't text and drive, kids. That's right. <laughs> oh! 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 I'm so sorry, but I have an awesome excuse. I was distracted driving. Ah, don't worry about it. <laughs> Good thing we don't feel pain. Hey, these are the monkey's legs. <laughs> Come back. I'm a clown. I can't afford to look ridiculous. That was a fun low line there. Yeah. Also, I always love an appearance of Mr. Teeny. Yeah. We then go to Springfield Elementary, where uh, Milhouse is eager to show Bart what he brought for Share Day. It's a skunk. Bart wonders who he should stink first. But Milhouse points out that the uh, animal can't spray as it has been de <laughs> The skunk's butt then shoots out several clear lo- Lego studs into Milhouse's face, spraying him. The gypsy skunk seller lied. And uh, the skunk then jumps out of Bart's hand and scurries through the hallway, frightening several children, including Window, Wendell, Sherry O'Terry, and what appears to be a young Homer. Because if you see in the background, there's like a kid wearing Homer's outfit. Yeah, maybe they just ran out of parts. Uh, but Bart and uh, Millhouse chase the skunky woodland creature down to the boiler room where he uh, sneaks through a space in the wall. And the boys begin to remove the bricks from the wall when groundskeeper Willie tries to stop them. Stop it! If you pull out those bricks, the whole school could collapse. But there's a skunk in there. <gasps> Scottish steak. Now we know skunks are Scottish steaks. At first I thought, are we going to offend gypsies by <laughs> the lying gypsy sk- skunk seller? But uh, now, you know, the Scots like to eat skunk. <laughs> I don't think I would like to eat a skunk, Steve. I don't think I would. Maybe that's the way they were killed. Because it, cause maybe after you eat it, you fart a lot. <laughs> hey, I think I'm, I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast before, but I think I've smelled s- skunks, but mm-hmm. I've never actually seen a skunk. Huh, interesting. Have you They're seen They're really them? cute. Yeah, I don't think I've ever encountered one in my life. For some reason, my neck of the wood has a real big skunk problem. Either that or somebody in my neighborhood really likes bad weed. But <laughs> I'd say about two nights a week, it just gets real stanky around here. I think it's just bad weed. Probably. All right. So Willie then bursts through the brick wall, causing the entire school to collapse. The school children, surrounded by the wreckage, look around in confusion. In the background, Kearney and Dolph can be seen giving a student a swirly in a toilet. And as the door to a broom closet falls, Super Nintendo Charmers and Lunch Lady Dora are seen making out. And despite the school falling to pieces, Martin Prince is still working vigorously at his desk. And in front of him is a poster teaching basic anatomy, which shows all the parts of a minifig. In an upset, Principal Skinner tells Bart that uh, he will have to re- rebuild every brick of the school and then hands him a Lego set for Springfield Elementary. And Bart points out that it says ages 12 and up. The educator points out that the age guidelines are just uh, conservative and, and, and everyone knows it. That's right. You know, I gotta say that uh, Willie's the one who destroyed the school. He should be rebuilding it. I, I kind of had that thought too. I mean, it's all his fault. It's always the Scots' fault, Steve. <laughs> That's right. Stupid Scots. Like, Bayo. Bart then gets to work uh, using the uh, wordless directions that any Lego builder would be familiar with. Uh, Skinner, offer, Skinner then offers Bart motivation via words of support via a school chum. He then pulls out the parts of Nelson from the pile and rebuilds them. 
Uh, Nelson takes two steps towards Bart, lets out a classic ha ha, and Seymour thanks the bully and then takes him apart again, returning his body back to the mass of Lego pieces. Uh, so meanwhile, Homer has arrived at the uh, Android Dungeons and Baseball Card Shop, and inside uh, we get collectibles such as Krusty's Lunchbox, Itchy and Scratchy Figurines, a poster for the movie's Block Runner, and a poster for Radioactive Fig. There's even a collection of writings by Philip K. Brick with uh, titles such as... The Three Brick Mata of Palmer Ebrick. Ubrick. We Can Build You. The Mini Fig in the High Castle. Sort My Pieces, the Police Fig said. Do Mini Figs Dream of Plastic Sheep? Uh, beyond Lies the Stud. And a Scanner Blockly. Craig, do you know Dick? In that, have you read a lot of Philip K. Dick? I've never read them. I'm familiar with, like, the movies. And, sure. uh, you know, like uh, Blade Runner, yeah. which is... Uh, do many figs dream of plastic sheep um mm-hmm. i never watched the man in the high castle that's basically hitler didn't die right yeah no yeah or they won or something yeah yeah that old story i feel like um and i could have done more research but i didn't that this story aside from being kind of uh similar to the lego movie which we'll talk about later has a lot of elements of uh, philip k dick novels so if you listeners are a big fan of his work if you're a big dickhead let us know share us your dick knowledge yeah. Well, uh, Homer then goes to the counter to request Lisa's birthday gift, one perky Hattie's princess shop. The comic book guy states how nice it is to meet a fellow Amphop, adult male fan of princesses. And Homer explains that the set's for his daughter, to which uh, Jeff Albertson doesn't believe. And uh, behind Comic Book Guy, we see two posters. One for Blocko Comics, which uh, is a take on Groening or Groening's uh, Bongo Comics. And another one for Blockwoman, which I thought was fun. When the vendor presents the perky Patty Princess shop to Homer, he's confused as he feels like he's seen it before. And he puts his hands on it and Homer's body begins to convulse. As he shakes, the camera zooms into his face, and we're transported to the regularly animated Simpsons. Do you like it, honey? I love it, Dad. Thank you. Well, have fun putting it together. Wait, what? what? Dad, don't you want to build it with me? Well, there's no dad on the box. I don't want to get in trouble. Of course I do! What do you know? I enjoyed playing with you. Me too, Dad. No, no, no. Listen to me. We played, and it wasn't boring. We played lots of times. Of course we have, because you're my girl and I love you. But I'm letting you in on a secret. When parents play with their kids, they don't like it. And I'm no different. Oh. Suddenly, I can't breathe. Every fiber of my being screams out for a nap. And if someone handed me an issue of The New Yorker, I would read the fiction. I swear to God, I would. Wow. But there are millions of parents in the world. Surely some of them like nope, playing with them. Nope, not even one. Steve, do you like playing with your kids? Nope. <laughs> I don't have kids, but if I did, I wouldn't. I play uh, Lego. Yeah, Lego's fun. It's funny because I love to play with kid things, <laughs> but not with kids themselves. I'm like a reverse Michael Jackson. <laughs> so you have audio, you know, saying I like to play with kids. <laughs> I just want to play with their things. <laughs> that makes it sound less worse, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're good. I just want to play with their little uh, toys and whatnot. <laughs> One of the reasons why I don't, ha- why I'm not having kids is because I find things enjoyable until I don't, and then I want to move on. And sometimes that's not easy for kids to do, and uh, it's not bad of them. I just don't want to deal with it. So, yeah, that's it. No one's asking you to have kids, Steve. I know. Not anymore. <laughs> not after the incident. Um, so when they're building uh, Lisa's, uh, I'll say it now, uh, Perky Patty's Princess Shop, uh, the walls go diagonally. That doesn't happen on Legos. What? Yeah. Steve, is that a blunder? I think it might be. Boy, I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. It was probably Brian Kelly. That's right. Take your Emmy and shove it up your brick butt. Diagonally. <laughs> yeah. well, that's the easier way to do it. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Wow. Well, anyways, Homer then goes to make his case, explaining how boring the things kids like to do. Like, uh, like tea parties with pretend food, hide and seek with food flagrant peaking and the most inhumane torture devised by man candy land but this doing with the legos that's tolerable hmm. yeah steve is candy land that bad probably. i think it's just really repetitive i've not played it in probably 36 years <laughs> i don't remember so like sidebar here can i have a sidebar mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i was watching the food network and uh 
apparently Kristen Chenoweth is hosting a show called Candyland where the entire set's made of candy. Huh. You know, Kristen Chenoweth, known for yeah. being a world famous chef. Right. Famous culinarian. <laughs> I think when they were pitching this idea for like Candyland, the TV show, or like who's the most perky like person we can find? Yeah. Maybe they just didn't, they had the concept of having a candy set, but they didn't want like a full size set. <laughs> So they got her because she's very small. <laughs> yeah, she's literally like two feet tall. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you, but like Food Network is usually on all the time. Mm-hmm. Like if there's nothing on TV, it's just flip over to Food Network. Yeah, it's an easy passive watch. Yeah. All right, let's go back to Triple D here, Steve. All righty. So <laughs> we then uh, flash back to the Lego version of the world where Homer is dumbfounded by his uh, crazy vision of being in a world where nothing is made of bricks except for toys. A comic book guy then points out to a sign that says, no outside realities, and then Homer runs out of the store, frightened. Back at home, uh, brick home that evening, Homer's trying to tell Marge of his odd occurrence. Marge, I'm telling you, it was so weird. My body was squishy and my hands looked like snakes made of meat. It was horrible. Oh, homie, it was probably just a mini stroke. You're just saying that to make me feel better. Whatever you saw, it wasn't real. That's how the world works. Everything fits with everything else, and nobody ever gets hurt. I know. Oh, maybe you just need someone to, you know, take your mind off it. Hmm? I always need that. I only don't ask, because being rejected gets old. Uh, the couple then bone, and uh, afterwards, Homer tells Marge how close he feels to her, and the camera reveals the body parts of both of them strewn all over the bedroom, thrown wildly in fits of passion. But uh, once rebuilt, Homer heads to the bathroom, and at the sink, the translucent uh, blue studs fall from the faucet, and Homer throws them on his face, and if he looks in the mirror, he sees an animated version of his face dripping with water. What? It confuses and scares the shit out of him. So he calls out to ask uh, Marge. They replace their regular mirror with a magical mirror from a mystical salesman at a weird store that uh, if they went ba- back to find it, it wouldn't be there anymore. To which Marge wildly responds, no, resulting in Homer screaming. Yikes. And so our second act begins with Homer walking down the street trying to get a grasp of reality. He's sure that there are a lot of people who see hideous flesh monsters when they look in the mirror. And as he strolls by the uh, Bricky Mart, he sees the animated reflection of himself in the window of the convenience store. Oh, Brick, me! Leave me alone! Why don't you go back where you came from? I have as much right to be here as you! I, sir, I'm in the advent calendar! Hmm? December 18th, final week! Huh? Well, and uh, said advent calendar, we see uh, minifigs for, for a lot of people here, Steve. Um, I'm just going to list them off real quick. We won't do okay. our usual bit here. So day one, we got Flanders. Day two, we got Burns. Day three, we got Mo. Day four, we got Rod Flanders. Day five, we got Seymour Skinner. Day six, we got Krusty the Clown. Day seven, we got Reverend Lovejoy. Day eight, we got Millhouse. Day nine, we got Sherry and Terry. Day 10, we get Lenny. Day 11, we get Carl. Day 12, we get Chief Wiggum. Day 13, we get Mr. Teeny. Day 14, Mr. Cossington. Day 15, we get Nelson. 16th, we get Lunch Lady Dora, or maybe Doris. 17th, we get uh, Smithers. 18, we get Apu, like he said. 19, mm-hmm. Groundskeeper Willie. 20, Abe Simpson. The 21st, we get Homer. 22nd, Lisa. 23rd, Bart. 24, Marge. And the 25th, the Jesus baby herself, Maggie. <laughs> well done, Craig. Well done. I think it's kind of funny. You know how, like, are you aware that Lego does advent calendars, like, every year? Do they really? I thought that was the thing, but I wasn't sure. They do one for, like, Harry Potter. They do one for Star Wars. There's a few that they do. I think they even have one for the, there's a line called, like, Friends. I think it's called Friends. It's meant to be for girls. Oh, right, right, right. Which, like, the minifigs don't look like minifigs. They make, uh the, eh. It's a silly line because, like, Legos to me, like, are non-gender. Like, that's you know, what like, I like the, most about them is that they're not specific and, like, no, like, it was silly. They came like, let's appeal more to girls. Like, well, no, Legos appeal to boys and girls. They don't need to be. Let's have a girl line. Yeah, silly. And as a, as the theme of the movie and a little bit of this is that, like, you know, the fun thing about Lego is that you can do whatever you want with them. Like, right, the sets are fun, but it's more fun to like create your own thing. Anyway, Homer runs to Moe's and tells the bar to keep that he's going crazy and needs to kill off as many brain cells as possible. And Moe is there to help. He pours a beer-colored studs from his tap and hands it to Homer. When Homer puts the glass to his mouth, the beer takes animated liquid form, confusing him. This isn't beer. Beer is plastic circles. Uh, he then asks Moe, Lenny, and Carl if they saw what he saw. But as he looks upon the uh, bartender and his patrons, they too have turned into 
classic Simpsons form mm-hmm. in Homer's eyes. Homer once again runs away, scared and confused. Hey, here's some fun stuff, Steve. If you look back on uh, the love tester there, mm-hmm. it has different uh, ratings. It's more uh, Lego pieces. Like there's gray one by ones, a blue three by one, a yellow four by two flat, <laughs> an orange six by two brick with holes. And then finally, the number one is a uh, red eight by two with a slanty part and a hinge. I can't read that part. I think it's hinge, yeah. And hinge. There you go. That's cool. Also, there is a vending machine behind Homer uh, for hats and hair. <laughs> Neat. Yeah. Um, so back at, in the spot where Springfield Elementary used to be, Bart is grumpily rebuilding the foundation of the school atop of a field of flat green pieces as Willie looks on. And Bart comments that uh, given the chance, he can make the school so much cooler than it used to be. And then Willie yawns and he takes off his legs and uses them as a pillow, falling asleep. And the Lego thought cloud of the Z's or over his head. And up you know, Bart's, Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I just happen to think if Willie could take off his lower half so easily, I don't want to be crass, but I feel like there are possibilities there. Are you saying he's going to suck his own dick? Potentially. That's what they call a Scottish blowjob. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Bart uh, lets out a uh, laugh and uh, Skinner is uh, shocked to see what uh, Bart has done. (laughs) (gasps) What have you done to my school? I put in a rock climbing wall. All the classrooms are skate parks. We got zip line stairwells, Terminator gym teachers. Your office is now a haunted forest, extra ghosts. And if you can believe it, two tetherball poles. How will children learn if they don't feel like they're in kid jail? Relax, I used all the same bricks. Plus Ralph. You saw a language lab! Ugh. I yeah, like uh, Bart's creativity there. That's what I'm talking about. See, Lego, you can do anything with it. I especially like his uh, Haunted Forest. I love uh, the classic uh, ghosts. Oh, so good. They're glow in the dark. I don't remember Terminator sets, but I like how they're yeah, gym teachers. And, you know, why don't schools have more than one tetherball? Like, it's literally a pole. I think my elementary school had a couple. Ooh, la yeah. da <laughs> We didn't have the ball. We just, had, we just whipped around the chain. <laughs> Until some kid got his eye poked out. My school was so poor, we had to play three square. Uh, We then uh, head to the First Church of Springfield, where the marquee reads, The Bible, the best-selling brick in the world. Homer is reluctant to uh, go inside of the house of worship, as he is too busy going crazy. Marge tells her husband that uh, when she is troubled, she always finds solace in the airtight logic of religion. Inside uh, Reverend Lovejoy's offering, a sermon explaining the creation of the world as they know it. Before the world began, there was only table. Then the great constructor scissored open bag one and dumped out the universe. Then came the time of the great sorting, color to color, shape to shape, and a pile of just windows and doors. And everything was made of eternal, unchanging acrylonitrile butadine styrene, or in the common tongue, plastic. But, Reverend, what if everything isn't made of plastic? I think there's more to this world. You mean like decals? Well, the Orthodox don't use them, but we're a reform congregation. No, I mean a place where nothing snaps together and you just can't toss your kids in a dishwasher to clean them. Oh, Homer, a place like that could only exist in some kind of magic rock song. Look around. We live in a perfect world where everything fits together and no one gets hurt. Yeah, Mustache okay. is right. But I'm having all these hallucinations. Like right now, my hands look like they're these weird wiggly things. I think they have a name, but I can't put my finger on it. I don't know why they call them fingers. I've never seen them go fink. Oh, there they go. That's a record. Yes, that's a reference, Steve. Good job. Here's a good Thank you. <laughs> um, some more fun visual stuff. Um, in the Bible, Lovejoy's reading, the uh, chemical makeup of plastic is shown, and also the hymns are one by six and two by four, referencing Lego shapes. And one of the stained glass uh, windows in the background is a that duck that you pull. It's just another classic toy that people who have Legos would also have. Mm. And also behind Lovejoy is an orange brick remover, which I've never actually had, but evidently people have. So like when you have like two flat pieces that you can't get off and you mm-hmm. like hurt your thumb trying to pull it out. So when I was a kid, they were gray. Oh. And now they come with like sets. Mm-hmm. So now I just have like, you know, there's a bunch of just of the orange brick removers. Because I remember when I was a kid, I thought it was cool and I wanted one. And I don't know if you remember, but like they had like little catalogs every time you bought it, got a Lego set. Where we you got like, one in the mail yesterday. Oh, nice. 
but when you're a kid, you can order parts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I think it was like maybe like a dollar fifty. <laughs> so I remember like saving up a dollar fifty. Yeah, because you know I was I don't six. Know how old, <laughs> six and like a dollar fifty. You know, it was like two dollars, Steve. Still, yeah. What six year old needs money? None. <laughs> None. So I think I like put two dollars in an envelope and sent away, and I got it. It was great. That's awesome. I just imagine you writing on the envelope, "Lego." <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's that uh, magic rock song <laughs> Lovejoy is referring to? I don't know. I'm just thinking, is it like a Zeppelin tune? I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like it might have gone over my head, but I don't know what he was referring to. Did the internet, internet, <laughs> internet help us? It did internet. What a bunch of jerks. Yeah. Let's uh, tweet at uh, Brian Kelly. Maybe he, he'll let us know. Yeah, we'll do. Do right now. I'm waiting. At Brian Kelly. Make sure it's not the football player. Right. Or the country singer. Or do both. But we'll find out. Yeah. Anyways, the, uh, the congregation gasps as Homer's meaty four-digit hands. So Ned's shielding his son's gaze by uh, removing their heads. <laughs> and Homer's surprised that the others are sharing his hallucination. As his father calls him a freak that should be torn apart. And the pieces lost under the couch. Only to be stepped on by a barefoot loser later on. Marge defends her husband despite his hands being so mushy. Homer grabs his wife to head to the one place where he can get real answers. At certainly isn't the church. Meanwhile, uh, Lovejoy digs deeper into his faith. Let's see. Fingers. Come on. Show me something about fingers. Huh. Bad news, people. Our religion is not true. Sorry about that. I knew it. Wouldn't it be a, a kick if you were like at church and <laughs> the Reverend is like, yep, not true. Sorry. Try another one. Yes, it would. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, Marge and Homer head back to the comic book shop, where if Homer's assumptions are correct, when he touches a box of Perky Patty's Princess Shop, it'll trigger a memory from the alternate Homer's life. He then tells comic book uh, guy to tell Marge he loved her, should he not return, though Marge is standing right behind him. And yet again, Homer touches the toy and is sent to the two-dimensional world of The Simpsons. I can't believe all the time I wasted playing with Bart when I could have been playing with you. Aww. Our little Springfield is really turning out great. City Hall, the weird-smelling bank, Rehab World. Krusty Burger, Krusty Burger Express, the Krusty Burger where the governor got stabbed. Oh, you too. Hey, look what I found in the Arts Weekend obituary section of the paper. (gasps) A builder's competition. We got to enter our mini Springfield. We're a great team. We're there. I'll clear my calendar. Hey, Lenny, remember those two surfers we were going to fight? Well, you're on your own. But you're the one who sat on their fish tacos. Great talking to you, buddy. (laughs) Lisa, Lisa, I spent all day at work making a Duff Brewery for our mini Springfield. I don't want to brag, but it really brews. Huh? Where is she? For some reason, I really love that surfer quote. Like, uh, <laughs> me too. Like, it's just so out there. Like, I don't know who came up with that, but it was great. Yeah, I hope it pays off at the end. Hey, you're the one who <laughs> sat on their uh, fish taco, Steve. <laughs> Sorry, dudes. Um, but where is Lisa? Where is she indeed? Lisa's up in a room with some older girls making plans to see the 7.30 show of Hunger Games parody Survival Games. Lisa is excited to see her first PG-13 film ever and wonders what one swear word she'll hear. She then uh, offers a cuss she heard Grandpa say the last Thanksgiving. All right, Steve, I, uh, because, you know, she's whispering that cuss, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I've decided to isolate that and slow it down a bit and uh, amp up the volume. Let's see if you can hear what she says. Ready? All righty. That just sounds like haunty, creepy, like we're watching ghost adventures footage. Yeah. <laughs> it's sock about. Let's take it and uh, reverse it. Maybe it's like uh, Paul is dead, right? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Masu. <laughs> Hmm. It just sounds kind of creepy now, doesn't it? I know. What's uh, Paul Stretch do? Well, that was kind of creepy, but cool. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you entered a tomb in a video game. <laughs> Uh, what if I do a sliding stretch? <laughs> All right, I think we have enough fun with that there. All righty. Sock of the bell. Yeah, a sock of the bell. A sock of the bell. I'm sure she was just going, 
Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so the older girl explains that they don't usually hang out with us second graders, but uh, they were so impressed with Lisa's book report and how she got the book's theme, which was love. Huh. <laughs> and Homer bursts into the room announcing that uh, he is Lisa's playtime partner and BFF. He goes on further to embarrass his daughter in front of the cooler, older girls. I assume Lisa told you about the pretend tiny town she's building with her overweight father. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's going to be mucho fresh. Come on, honey. It's time to click some bricks. I don't know what he's doing up here. He usually stays in the basement. It's okay, Lisa. We have dads, too. I have three dads. See you Friday. Friday? But that's when Brickstock is. Um, actually, Friday is the opening night of the new Survival Games movie. And they invited me. But this was our thing. I know, I'm sorry, but cool older girls have never wanted to hang out with me before. One of them wears deodorant. I don't know which one. Oh, all right. Thanks for understanding, Dad. Mm. What just happened? It's not you. Lisa's growing up. It's a really complicated time in a girl's life from age eight till actually all the rest of the way. Craig, do uh, cooler older girls want to hang out with you? No, Steve, uh, your grandma doesn't want to hang out with me. Well, she's been dead since like 1849, so I don't blame her. Uh, so Homer's <laughs> finally found a way to connect with Lisa, and now he's lost it. He just doesn't fit into her world. Like a Lego piece, Steve. Oh, yeah. So then we head to the suites at exit 12B, uh, where Brickstock is taking place. And outside the hotel, we see Lenny there is holding his own as he fights two surfers who had uh, their fish tacos sat upon. Well, Lenny can get, you know, kick his own ass. Uh, inside, uh, Sherry O'Terry are building... I'm just watching the fight. It's really funny. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Inside, Sherry and Terry are building uh, Lego versions of themselves. Ned is building Noah's Ark. Milhouse and his father are creating an image of Bart with a word bubble that reads, Best Friend Superstar. And Comic Book Guy is building a statue of survival game games. Why is that word so weird for me? Games. I played games. Protagonist, Kinda Windwill. A take on Katniss Everdeen, as played by J-Law herself, Jennifer Lawrence. So you know how Sherry and Terry are building Lego versions of themselves? I think I know where you're going with this. <laughs> they're building their triplet that we found out about last week's episode. It's a very, yep, you're totally right. Because <laughs> they murdered her. <laughs> <laughs> they murdered her, and they're they're putting bricks behind the corpse. So it's like oh. a, a, they're entombing uh, their dead triplet. <laughs> so it's like a mummy. Yes, it's a mummy. <laughs> Lego mummy. I like Ooh, it. That's... Lego mummy. Can we pitch that to Hollywood? <laughs> I hope I don't get a brick boner. Remember the soccer mummy? Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> Doctor said not to make sure he doesn't get a boner. Rip. And O'Neal. <laughs> what episode was that? I don't. It doesn't matter. It's good. I think it's like a certain 13 or something. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, there's a clip. <laughs> oh, that's the teenage crossbow ace who stole my daughter from me. Kinda Wild Will is a modern feminist hero, strong, independent, and resourceful. She's a little... Bustier than I remember. My work on that front is never done. I wish I lived in Little Springfield. Everything fits together and no one ever gets hurt. So comic book guy uh, continued to add to the bust of the uh, survival games hero until the Lego sculpture collapsed, landing on Homer, knocking him out. He then wakes up in a land of brick, still in the android's judgment. Jeff Albertson explains the situation Homer finds himself in. Apparently, our whole world is a fantasy in the mind of an emotionally devastated Homer Simpson. One of the main questions I have about that is why? The real Homer fears losing his daughter's love, so he invented this toy world where nothing will ever change. How can you be sure? I have devoted my life to second-rate science fiction. Trust me, that is what we are dealing with here. So if I don't find my way out of here, I could be trapped in a fantasy forever? I'm afraid so. Woohoo! I'm trapped in a fantasy forever! Kiss my flat plastic butt reality! Yay. Yay. The internet said this, but I don't know if it's true. Do you think that's a reference to Bender? Like kissing his shiny metal ass versus... Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Yeah, I'll take it. All right. Well, Homer then runs out of the comic store and drop kicks his own head into the sky, shouting that daddy-daughter time will never end. Woo! 
And so our final act begins with Lego Marge and Homer walking by the statue of Jebediah Springfield with a quote that reads, a noble spirit in Brickens the miniest fig. <laughs> and in front of stores, elements of style, fine torsos for men, and a plastic surgery center that shows the before and after of a Lego boob job. Uh, Homer praises his brain-damaged brain for inventing the toy world as nothing bad can ever happen there. To prove this, he grabs a parking meter and flings it to the police helicopter flying nearby. And inside the chopper, Wigan tells Homer that he's had a great throw. And the whirly bird falls to the ground, crashing into several pieces. And Clancy calls on his officers to put it in Tupperware. Boys, they'll rebuild tomorrow. And Marge wonders if Homer's thinking is sound. Let me ask yourself, can you really live in a paradise if you know it's just pretend? Marge, who would give up eating steak in the Matrix to go slurp goo in Zion? We don't have that movie here. No, Lisa can never ditch me, and I can play with her forever! I mean, how does Marge know what if the Matrix is a movie? <laughs> I know. <laughs> that would just sound like a lot of nonsense if I heard that. <laughs> and then you mentioned Keanu Reeves and Joey Pants. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Meanwhile, Bart has completed building 12 Springfield elementaries, all to the instructions spe uh, specific specifications. He's learned his lesson. He'll never build what he wants to again. Skinner then shows Bart his birthday present, five more sets of Springfield elementary. Because that's all anyone gives Skinner's is the uh, Springfield. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but if you ever have a thing that you like, people will <laughs> yep. buy you that vague thing. Like, I wanted to be a bartender for a little while, and so I got, I'm going to say, like, 14 sets of martini glasses. Oh, Steve likes coffee. I'm going to get you uh -huh. some <laughs> coffee-related thing. You know, it's not a bad thing, you know. No, and it, it's sweet. It's just funny because I think that when somebody has a hobby, they tend to, like, get a lot of the things that they need for that hobby. So it's hard to, like, find the right thing. It's like if I mentioned like, oh, yeah, I like to grill. And then, you know, people will be like, I got you this grilling cookbook. It's like, well, I don't really need it, but uh, OK. Yeah. I remember one time this was like years ago that uh, it might have been like Thanksgiving for like a family Thanksgiving. And it might have been like 12 or 13. And I was like, I wanted to help. And I made like uh, biscuits, right? Mm -hmm. Or muffins. Uh, for Thanksgiving and like my family members came over like my aunts and uncles and uh, I just remember like you know it was like oh Craig made the muffins like oh wow they're so good even though it's like yeah I mixed flour and crap together and put them in a pan there you go mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I remember like the next Christmas my aunt and uncle like bought a cupcake pans and and baking cookbooks and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> like remember when you made those last year there you go it's like great okay <laughs> anyways so, uh, this year steve for christmas i'm just, i'm really into uh pornography <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of pornography <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving while you keep coming i'll get you some porno don't worry craig you know they have the on the internet now um <laughs> Anyway, uh, back at home, uh, Homer is seen enjoying a tea party with Lisa, fully committing to play Sparkle Unicorn, which might be a reference to the uh, other unicorn from the Lego movie. Uh, Lisa hasn't seen anything like this, as Homer usually just kind of phones it in when it comes to tea parties. Homer explains that he has created a perfect world with no PG-13 movies to take his daughter away. And then he goes on to say that Lisa will always be his little girl, Maggie will be his giant baby, and Bart will never move out of the house. And he'll work for Mr. Burns forever. He and Marge will never grow old together and live like fat cats on social security i hate to tell you homer no one's gonna live <laughs> like fat cats on social security these days that's true it's pretty much all gone yeah but uh oh no he'll never experience the ultimate reward for a life well lived the gentle slumber of death which we all want mm -hmm. we're all just waiting for um homer realizes he's made a terrible mistake kids growing up is what spending time with kids is all about he has to go back uh, he heads to the plastic comic book guy to find a way home. The poorly shop owner questions Homer's request. Home? But you've discovered the joy of living in a world made of toys where nothing bad can ever happen. But I miss burning my mouth on pizza and David Blaine stunts where he could really die. Now tell me how to get out of here. All you need to do is open the box back to your so-called reality. But I can't let that happen. All right, Steve, if you were to live in a toy reality minus Lego, which one would it be? 
Ooh, this is a good question. Because I know you were into uh, G.I. Joe's as a kid, but that's kind of a violent world. I don't know if I'd want to live in that. Yeah, and if I was, I, I would definitely be on the losing team because Cobra Commander was so much cooler. But <laughs> you're right. Part of me wants to live in the New York of the Ninja Turtles. Still kind of a scary place. Yeah. Also, I'm thinking about the land of Eternia in He-Man. <laughs> because you like a bunch of scantily clad muscular men. <laughs> Sure, and it's medieval times, but they're spaceships for some reason. <laughs> People have lasers or swords. Take your Isn't pick. like two women in the universe? Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> I was also going to say th- uh, Thundercat Land. Because you're a furry. Cause, yeah, and Shatara. <laughs> um, another land that might be kind of fun to live sexually. This is weird. <laughs> this is uh, he- sexual, by the way. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> there was a cat in uh, Heathcliff, like his girlfriend, when I was a kid, she was like weirdly sexual to me, and I don't know why. <laughs> was that your sexual awakening? <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> I think you are a furry. Can As you I look for... through my all my bear pictures? <laughs> ready for my plain vanilla answer? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I went on a diatribe there. <laughs> what do you say, Craig? Lincoln Logs, because I got a house. I can just build oh, my yeah. own houses, <laughs> and it's not really violent. It's There's incredibly no practical. Ninjas. There's no ninjas trying to kill me. There's no mutants trying to kill me. <laughs> So Skeletors. That's a very reasonable Classic and Lincoln. Yeah. Or maybe even Barbie, Steve. I oh, got to yeah. with Ken. I have a dick. He doesn't. Yeah. And your girlfriend has to be rich because she has a 40 billion jobs. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing she can't do. Nah, that's a be, smart one. Uh, so Barbie be great. Um, and uh, what about Mr. Potato Headland? Oh, well, yeah. You know yes. where, where I want to live? I want to live in the uh, the Fisher Price parking lot, the parking structure <laughs> with the little elevator that you scroll up, and it brings and it like the car goes down like, or maybe just a line of Hot Wheels. You just drive around all day. Yeah, or uh, easy bake oven. Ooh, yeah, and then you get food. Unless you are the food. Ooh, that's frightening. <laughs> You'd be burned to death very slowly <laughs> with a, a sixty watt light bulb. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'm gonna skip the easy, easy bake oven. I'm I'm gonna stay with my Lincoln Logs. I think that's a good choice. All right, well, back to the Simpsons world, Steve. So Comic Bice uh, switches his head around to show an angry face, much like Liam Neeson's character in the Lego movie. And that's right. Jeff Albertson is both the bad guy and the rule explainer guy. He represents the part of Homer's psyche that prefers the artificial reality to the real world. Comic book guy then uh, builds a castle around his shop. As he is the ultimate collector, he has every playset ever made. Homer is then uh, attacked by Lego pirates on a ship and Lego pajama guys or ninjas on a fighter jet. Uh, Homer is concerned that he'll never get home. There's only a way that, uh, that someone could build something awesome. Something so awesome to save him. But, but who? Who? Oh, yeah, Bart. Oh, yeah. Bart then hears his father's cries and uses the multiple Springfield Elementary Lego sets to build a giant mech Bart. And the pirates and ninjas close in on Homer. Bart's creation appears. You are going back where you came from, Denmark. What is that thing? I have no idea, but it's gonna kick his butt. That robot is made out of Batmobile, Hobbit Hole, and SpongeBob play sets. That's, that's miscegenation. Kid power. Lion Blast! <laughs> Lightsaber Barf! <laughs> This is strangely exhilarating. No, no, no! I am gonna enjoy playing with this thing forever! I'm a creative but undisciplined builder! I liked in that line, uh, go back to Denmark, because that's where uh, Lego is from. And I like how Bart said he's never going to stop playing with it, which, of course, you know, he will. Yeah. Because it's short. And, uh, you know, to the point, a uh, comic book guy complaining about the the set combination being offensive. Mm. Kind of the whole plot of a Lego movie. Hmm. Uh, Homer runs through the pile of bricks, kicking comic book guy's head out of the way, searching frantically until he finds Perky Patty's princess shop. He uh, opens up the box and is transformed to his normal self. He then s- says goodbye to his Lego Marge, and uh, they share a moment, and they both agree that the uh, the fact that they kissed was a little weird. Well, Homer goes through the box and is awakened by Lisa and the traditional Simpsons format, and he's still at the Lego building co- competition with fellow builders looking on and lisa asks her father if he's okay oh meet lisa it's you are you okay 
Oh, I had this crazy dream where I was in a world made of Lego bricks and learned important lessons about parenting. Hmm, isn't that kind of the plot of... No, no, it's not. It's a new plot. Honey, what are you doing here? I thought you were going to your movie. I changed my mind. I knew how much this meant to you. No, no, go to the movie with your friends. If there's one thing I've learned, it's that I can't stop you from growing up. I love you, Dad. Me too, little girl. So in that clip, as Lisa was mentioning, the similarities between this and the Lego movie, uh, in the background we see the comic book store owner, that isn't comic book guy, Milo, uh, pushing large versions of uh, Emmett and Wildstyle from the Lego film. And then we uh, pan out to the hotel and all of Springfield, the Earth, the Milky Way, and finally the universe as a Lego set for ages 13 billion up with 10 to the 80th power number of pieces. Lego hands fold up the display, and that's the show. Oh, boy. Well, Craig, let's uh, take a break, and uh, let's take a break. <laughs> that's what you said. I swear you heard you say take a break. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, come back, and we'll talk a little bit more about Brick Like Me. Sure thing, Stud. We'll be right back. Faison, Joshua. Don't make me pick between you two on the night before I re-enter the struggle dome again. We'll never stop loving you, even if you string us along forever. 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 How can I choose between two boys? One who's dangerous but good-looking, the other who's strong but super cute. Oh my god, this is terrible. When did they get to killing the children? Shh. Wait a second, you're not into this. Shh. She's trying on dresses. Oh, I just wanted to see kids fight to the death is all. All right, we're back, Steve. Let's uh, wrap up Brick Like Me, and uh, we'll do our very, 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 very funny visual gags. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Trying to save myself there. Um, Then we'll do our quotes, and uh, then uh, our review, and we'll find out what we're watching next episode. All righty. Sounds good, Greg. Yeah, let's talk about uh, our favorite quote or scene. How about, uh, I'll tell you, it's... uh, Maybe a little controversial. I don't know if it's controversial, but it's uh, it's when Homer is at the window at the Quickie Mart or Bricky Mart. And he says, uh, get out and uh, go back to where you came from. And Apu thinks he's talking to him. And Apu is like, I have every right to be here. I thought that was uh, one of my favorite jokes. Yeah, that one was definitely on the top, uh, high on my list. I thought it was, yeah, really funny. And yeah, it's it's hard because this was a fun episode, but uh, I think I gotta go with the uh, the just the payback of and the randomness of uh, Lenny having to fight the surfers because right. Homer sat on their fish tacos. And what really sells it for me is the the payback later, where outside of the uh, hotel, Lenny is fighting two surfer dudes and holding his own really well. I still want to know like what situation was there's fish tacos somewhere. And Homer sits on them. Like, did they put him on a chair? Or is it like a bench thing, maybe? Like a a picnic table and Homer, like, sits on the top? I don't know. Well, I'm guessing that since there's surfers, they're on the beach. And so maybe, like, they had a bag of tacos, like, in the sand and Homer didn't look. I don't know. What's Lenny and uh, Homer doing at the beach? Yeah. Where's Carl in all this? Huh. Yeah, he's he's absent. Yeah. I mean, except for like, the episode Lego that film. I want to watch. <laughs> the absent Carl show? Yeah. Carl doesn't need to go away. I just want to know the events <laughs> that led to uh, Lenny yeah. and Homer pissing Not off in- some uh, surfers. I like how the surfers are also still in, like, their board shorts and it's clearly <laughs> nighttime. Yeah. <sighs> but Lenny does kick some ass there. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, too, because Homer walks by without, like, he literally can help. <laughs> Or at least say, hey, Lenny. Yeah. Doesn't do anything. Now I changed my mind. That's my favorite scene now, too. <laughs> it's just like right. there's layers and layers and layers on this sight gag or a one-off joke. That Yeah. Yeah. And I love that uh, this scene has nothing to do with Lego. No. Whatsoever. <laughs> I feel like maybe uh, someone in the writing staff was just like always wanted to pitch this scene. And like, yeah. All right. You can put it in this Lego episode. All right. Cool. <laughs> Well, um, how about a uh, uh, visual gag? What do you want maybe tattooed or uh, made into well, a T-shirt or a pillow or a minifig? It's obvious that, you know, this is a very visual episode. And I feel like we say that a lot of times. But this, you know, is a visual spectacle. Like writing the notes of it was very hard to not just write the things that I was seeing on the screen, which is basically what I did. But I'm going to go with the uh, Blockwoman T-shirt. <laughs> Uh, just because I think it'd be fun to have a shirt that you have to explain like three layers of. 
Like it's like Aquaman, but the Simpsons, but also Lego. <laughs> I'm just going to take uh, your favorite uh, joke and make it a t-shirt. We make Lenny or yeah, Lenny beating up surfer guys. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I like the uh, the Lego Bible would be kind of funny. Oh yeah, that's good. But I think maybe I know this sounds kind of silly, but just brick versions of uh, the Simpsons family, and with all of them kind of being the same height, except for uh, Maggie, who is bigger than them. Ooh, that's that's really good. I like that a lot. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. really fun. I think I'll stick with uh, <laughs> Lenny beat up uh, Surfer guys. It's fun. Um, all right. Well, let's uh let's discuss our feelings on bricks. All righty. Well, bricks are, you know, usually brown. They mm-hmm. make buildings. Oh, how about the episode instead? Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, in a way, this episode is clearly like a little bit like not a sweeps kind of thing, but kind of like, you know, a publicity stunt, stunt in a way. A gimmicky episode. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. And I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing, but it is kind of what it is. And I think that's fine. But I don't know. It was fun. I think that had to do with like, well, yeah, because we know the Lego movie came out and it was you know really popular. Mm hmm. And I think that uh, it's one of those things too to to get viewers like like oh I haven't seen The Simpsons in a while oh they're doing a Lego episode oh, I haven't watched it in years I'll watch this episode yeah I think that's how I felt too when it, when it came out I was like oh yeah I'm gonna watch it and I think that for for that it's good I it, you know it's maybe not like the funniest episode ever, ever and like they spend a lot of time making these Simpsons Lego jokes but I think that's kind of the whole point of it and I think if you're like wanting the to like capture the whole pantheon of the Simpsons this is a good one to watch because it's something different and you know that's what Brian Kelly does and uh I don't know I thought the jokes were solid the plot line you know while it does parallel the Lego movie quite a bit I think it's still fun was this being produced at the same time the Lego movie was being produced Ooh, that's a really good question because I know the Lego movie was announced um because it took a couple years just to make that movie Mm because it came out in 2014 but I feel like they announced in like 2008 wow they conceived it around then but it was greenlit in 2011 and this aired in 2014 so they had to have done this in 2013 at least to make this episode Mm -hmm. and the movie lego movie was released in 2014 yeah so that the movie came out in february of 2014 and this came out in may of 2014 what i'm saying is like they had a year to put this together i'm wondering did they know the plot of the lego movie because like that one joke at the end like this oddly is like the like maybe that was like a a newer edition they added that into the episode be like because what if like the simpsons like predicted like what the lego movie was actually really about that seems very possible because i think that there is a lot of uh, uh bart's b plot of having the using his creativity exactly creativity versus following the instructions is i think just a big point of lego in general where you know some people are very strict and ardent about creating the set as is while others are more about being creative and either way if if they knew about it or they didn't i think that this episode is unique enough that it's fun and uh i don't know i had a good time and so you know the uh lego house set of the simpsons the the 742 evergreen terrace set has 2523 pieces of that i'm gonna give this uh let's say uh 2000 300 so you're missing maybe the car or something what do you think rick all right so you said two three zero zero out of two mm-hmm. five two three yeah all right that's a 91 percent steve that's an an a minus sure why not all right one of my favorite story lines in the simpsons is homer and lisa episodes and this clearly was a homer lisa episode i don't know, i just think it, i don't have a daughter but uh i just feel like uh I would pretty much be like B. Homer with if I had kids. I you know, <laughs> you bring up a good point that I didn't mention, but, uh, you know, we talk a lot about quote unquote heart of the Simpsons and like the emotional connection. And that's kind of like the, the genesis of this whole episode is Homer wanting to connect with Lisa. And I felt that it was genuine. So, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it's a thing that uh, parents deal with when they realize that there's only a few years left where you can still be the fun dad or, you know, the fun parent, hang out with the kids and have daddy daughter day or whatever. When, you know, kids start turning to teenagers, they don't want to hang out with their parents anymore. I mean, we, I mean, I went through that. I'm like, I don't want to hang out with my parents. That's oh, yeah. And so it's, it's sweet on Homer's part. And I, I love the, the balance between like, there's a reason they need to, they could have just done like a whole episode 
of them in Lego land making Lego jokes with no rhyme mm-hmm. or reason. Yeah. But the fact that they would intertwine with quote unquote real Simpsons world and the Lego world, I thought they did a great job of balancing those two elements. And it is, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very fun episode and it's, it doesn't feel to me when watching this that it's a gimmick. And so I think, uh, I think I recommend people watching this episode. I had fun and uh, it's one of those I think I'd put on again too. Yeah, me too. So uh, you did the, uh, the Simpsons house. Well, there's the quickie mart and that has a uh, 2,179 pieces, Steve. Mm-hmm. So I think out of a uh, 2,179, I'm going to give this episode a, uh, I'm going to give this episode a 1977, the year Star Wars was released. <laughs> Uh, makes it uh, a ninety percent. That's still good. So we're kind of like in the same boat. We're a, we're a Fonz, an A. A. Yeah. So uh, go ahead and uh, check out Brick Like Me, everyone. The five hundred and fiftieth episode of The Simpsons. That's right. A fun time for everyone. Let's find out what we're watching next week. Alrighty, Craig. And to do that, we're gonna need our good old friend, the Wheel of Random. Let's spin it to see what season we're in. Ba-doop. We have season 31. Season 31. Alrighty, and let's spin to see the episode. Episode 6. Season 31, episode 6. Why, that's Marge the Lumberjill. What happens in that one, Craig? Well, Marge becomes a competitive lumberjack and goes on a month-long retreat to Portland? What? That's us. That is us. Yeah, with her trainer, and uh, whom Homer fears will take his wife away from him. Oh, no. Now... I remember this episode because we didn't really review it. Mm-hmm. I remember we talked about it in an intro for one of the podcasts about a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of Portland references. But now I guess we get to actually dive into it. Yeah, I, I remember the episode fondly and I look forward to uh, digging deeper into it. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's finally on uh, Disney Plus now. They added season 31 a few weeks ago. So there we go. Yeah. All right, Steve, the, uh, the people out there. <laughs> Our hey listeners. People. Yeah. You know, they can go to uh, tpublic.com slash user slash annoyed grunt boys to get some uh, merch like our logo on a, on a mug. That's fun. Yeah. And you guys, you can always contact us on social medias like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at 138 Simpsons. And you can always email us at 138 Simpsons at gmail.com. And hey, if you want to, leave a review on your favorite podcasting app. Uh, leave us five stars or the equivalent and uh, write a review. But I don't want actual thoughts on us. Uh, just tell me your favorite Lego set growing up. All right. For this week, I've been half an annoyed blockhead, Craig. And I've been your stud. Steve. <laughs> Remember, keep uh, reaching for the skis. Lion Blast! When did I get to killing the children? <laughs>